from teaching paradigm to learning paradigm, which means from transferring information to creating knowledge. I'm sorry, I'm staying very near the road, so you might get this vehicle sound a little bit once in a while. Uh, so I have had a first-hand experience. Let me tell you my experience of this. After I studied, uh, you know, joined design, NID, National Institute of Design to learn design, first time I encountered what is called as a learning paradigm. In learning paradigm, there is no one teaching. Everybody is learning, no compulsion. Everybody does it because they want to do it. Uh, no attendance, no judgments, no comparisons, no marks. It's a learning environment where even the so-called teacher is involved in learning what they are interested in. Now, but most of our exposure has been to teaching environment, which actually tragically today starts from home itself. Parents are busy teaching. They, they no longer know how to love children. They, know, they don't know how to trust life. So it's a different, very different paradigm, uh, you know, that we begin the childhood itself. So teaching from home, then of course, schools have been a total tragic situation of teaching only uh, and throughout engineering. So my experience, because my parents were teachers, uh, right from home, it was only a teaching environment. So this is my first hand experience. So I would like to share some paradoxes of modernity, modern education. So the story till now has been that linguistic data has been transferred on to people with different tags. Something is called physics, economics, biology, mathematics. It's all in language form, decontextualized. You have never seen anything. So there is input that is happening and the measure measurement of output is done. And then of course they are graded you know, into people who can go into IITs and IITs and different, different, different places. So this is a system that we have been following. following. And this, is, this system has been developed by asking the single question, how to teach children? So this is one paradigm. Now, there's a twist in the story now with artificial intelligence coming in that, uh, you know, the, the, the plan is now to get the help of uh, artificial intelligence, different type of mechanisms to put in digital data into our head. So the teacher is assisted by, in fact, it's the other way around. Teacher is going to assist the AI actually. Teacher has always been an assistant only. Top-down approach. And what will happen is a total alienation from real life. Because the child hardly ever, today actually I've been looking into some of the toys that are there in the, in the Western countries. It's amazing that children never get to see life. They only get to see different kinds of mechanisms, you know, uh, and that is their exposure. So what happens is that, of course, it is the how to teach paradigm only and far more alienated from life because our exposure to life, biology, biological things, processes is slowly, slowly being, uh, you know, taken away. So the story of uh, artificial intelligence is that initially it was called machine learning and teaching machines what to do. So in the, exactly the way we do children, we do with children. And of course they have reached the height of, uh, they could defeat even uh, Gary Gasp Kasparov, the chess champion. And then of course with, uh, you know, uh, then of course they, they decided that they must have machines that can think on their own, meaning create knowledge on their own. So this is the development that is happening in the artificial intelligence. And the paradox is that this artificial intelligence is being developed by learning how children learn. And the same thing is now being used to, you know, to really dumb down children. So, you know, I have been doing little research on this and I found that the amount of money that is spent on trying to understand how children today, it's, it's happened all of a sudden. They never was interested in understanding how children learn. The only question they had was how to teach children. So this is what I found very interesting about the modern mind, which is compartmentalized. Because when they are in one compartment, they will think of something. And when they, the, the same person, shift into another compartment, they delete that and have a new thought. Because if someone who has truly understood children are intelligent, they learn on their own and they learn before even language comes in, they can't then turn around and say that we need to teach children. So the same scientist who is making the similar, both statements actually. So this is the kind of, huge amount of money, huge amount of effort to understand how children learn. 
only to develop intelligent machines. So you can just go through, you know, let me just share the sound so you get, uh, uh, you know, a short video that I will share with you. If there is a problem with sound, just let me know. One can look at the story of computer science and think we have at least three ages. One is the age of programmers. The, in the age of programmers, you have to pay very smart people quite a lot of money to make uh, some system behave in an intelligent way. We are now in the age of labelers, in which you pay a lot of people not much money in order to label data. And both of them, uh, especially this one is n going to infinity, you know, number of labeled data going to infinity. But of course, uh, you know, children don't, don't have uh, big data. Um, we really would like to, to be able to show one car and one plane to a child, like we do for a child, and then they're able to, immediately to generalize very well. So our ideal is n going to one and to have computers that learn like children from experience. So, so now our choice is whether should we learn from AI how to teach or whether we should learn from children how to learn. One thing must be very clearly understood that we, the educated people, do not know how to learn because all our training right from childhood is to analyze somebody's information. I, I don't think we even understand what is the process called learning and of course what constitutes knowledge. Now let's do one more audit of education. What it has done is it's destruction of total other knowledge systems. It has also destroyed the ability to create knowledge because that ability is biologically grounded and every living being is capable of creating knowledge. Now another thing, interesting thing is that only 10% of the so-called educated people are even today involved in producing knowledge and that too for commercial purposes, funded by corporates. There is no independent learning about, you know, for example, if you take the, take the situation today of destruction of environment, the whole destruction that we are doing, where is the effort that is being made to understand how we have alienated ourselves and started this destruction? And of course, total absence of existential sustainable knowledge for the well-being of life. So this is what has happened, total alienation, destruction of sensitivity. And another very important thing is the subtlety that, that is totally missed out in the modern context, actually. So uh, the other biggest paradox I find is that we call this the scientific times, but our life, if you look at, we are leading most unscientific life with the existential loss of existential knowledge of how to even parent. Now, this is the uh, where we have reached that we don't even know how to look after our children. So the biggest crime against children is that we are treating them as idiots. Um, and through teaching by simplifying ABCD, miniaturizing the real world through toys, distorting through cartoons and the silly stories now everybody is you know, wanting to talk to children and we are belittling children by this process. Whereas children are naturally equipped to learn the real world as it is, which means their content always remains the same. It's the real world they are, they are trying to understand, but they are equipped by nature to simplify it on their own and then understand the complexity. So their, their content never changes. Unlike in our school system, every, every year, there is every day, there is a change of content. No, their content don't they change. Their content is what they're experiencing every day. But they are fine tuning and understanding the complexity of that. And, and you know, that, that's the, actually the process that actually children use. So clearly there are two paradigms. One is how to teach children which of course starts with the deficit syndrome. Children doesn't know anything. And the second paradigm is how children learn. It starts with the completeness syndrome, meaning children are perfectly fine. What, what they need is a space for them to awaken to their completeness. And the, 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 the issue that we must understand is that the moment we put a question, that question will dictate the answer. So our question, how to teach children, led us to you know inquire what to teach when to teach how much to teach how to test how often you know all these questions that today we have is based on one question that how do we teach children shift the question ask how children learn all this paradigm will break break and then 
and your role itself will change because otherwise you are you are ready with your ready made knowledge you know everything so your your job is only to transfer that the moment you shift this question you become completely blank you don't know which means you then turn to be a, a true learner your observation starts you ask question what do they learn how do they learn how do they learn language what is the role of language everything that we have taken for granted would 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 change and uh, so what is this uh, you know there are so why are we educated not able to understand children this is one question that because our pretense is that we have understood everything this is the tragedy of this is a you know the whole paradox of all this, the the you know the situation that we think we have understood and the fact is that we have not understood anything this is the real uh, issue that we need to ha handle uh, so we see them as needing help assistance and we are seeing them through our categories we have created category like learning time play time art work and everything has its own hierarchy its own materials this is all a modern construct actually children don't fall into any of these categories and other you know important thing that we have missed out is we are giving more and more product uh, we have become product oriented and frankly we are absent all the time because we are always in the mind so a distinguishing factor that i have experienced is that literates are taught the word whereas illiterates learn the word this is a crucial difference that we must understand and children are actually born into the illiterate framework so which means that if you don't interfere they will use what is naturally endowed by life so modern mindset is linear fragmented compartmentalized alienated and uh, the children and literates have a simultaneous way of knowing that is integrated and it is whole now uh, you know we are of course we have understood many of this and so we we say we want holistic thing and integrated thing all the terms right terms we are using but we do not have the capacity to shift from one paradigm to another paradigm precisely because this is not a matter of thought by thinking from tomorrow i will be become holistic is not going to happen because you are structurally linear fragmented and compartmentalized so one very important thing that that if you need to understand children is what and, and, and the true nature of learning is what i call as paradigm of the unknown and compare it with paradigm of the known we actually we belong to the paradigm of the known because we have ready made knowledge you know and naturally it will take us into the realm of known because we know everything we only need to uh and through that is through analysis second hand knowledge stored very well and we need to only apply it now the, you shift into the paradigm of unknown it changes completely because it demands observation interest involvement of you know it's a, it's a recurring process naturally it will build in attention patience resilience you know uh and playfulness discovery innovation so you see every characteristics of of uh, a true learner is it, it actually belongs to the realm of unknown and what happens is that your abilities qualities attitude aptitude morality beingness and even uh, and, and of course and that makes you into a nature centric person all this is based on whether we begin with the unknown or we begin with the known known meaning of course it is certainty inability and of course we are very over confident people no that's come from our false notion that we know everything so arrogant superiority complex now the superiority complex is not something that you are that you are aware of it is an inbuilt system the the fact that you think you are educated without your wanting you feel superior and and our behavior towards people whom whom we think are inferior are, is always from a hierarchical position you know you meet an illiterate person immediately you begin to give sermons to children this is what we do so this is clearly very important thing to understand unknown what does it do unknown shape your value system based on humility and wonder and it also shapes your cognitive system based on senses body and experience and no teaching also shapes your value system based on openness collaboration cooperation and your cognitive system based on playful exploration discovery intelligence open ended processing and the third this is the most important thing that it will happen in autonomy this is an extremely important thing and and of course the final thing this is the most important thing which is that never having felt 
that they have failed or made a mistake now this is what education does to each one of us you 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 know even from a first standard you are certified that you are won or lost in the natural learning process nobody certifies whether won or lost that system doesn't exist at all in the in the true nature of learning so this is actually the the idea that you you have failed you are won you are you know passed all these are artificially injected notions in the head so how to learn learn learning is natural its curiosity is life given learning means to create knowledge learning means to shape oneself the context is the content meaning where you live what is your context is your content and language is used for articulation and not for cognition so children are biologically equipped to create knowledge and not to analyze information which also means that it is biologically bound and we use biological tools qualities aptitudes uh, to understand this process so uh, you see this uh, oh my god i by mistake i went into the last slide this is ha ah, yes okay so why dictate the purpose why do we learn what is the content and how is the process so why children learn it's actually it's not children's any egoistic idea life is learning L learning really living is about learning only there's nothing else that every living being is doing and it is to sustain life and if you look around you will find that the only activity that the life is attempting to do is to sustain life and it's only the modern human beings who have stepped out of this process actually because they have completely mistaken the idea that why are we learning you know so these are all life given as i told earlier and so the one very important thing that must be understood about the human being is that even though we, we have a huge potential and we also claim to be most intelligent well i don't make these kind of comparisons at all because i don't think it can be compared at all but uh, there is one important thing that we need to understand that in the earlier stages of i mean during childhood we are extremely helpless totally vulnerable and totally dependent on the external condition and even our ability to walk should not be taken for granted it should be it, it, it's only a potential and it has to be drawn out now the case of feral children clearly point out this fact that the first child that you see was looked after by dogs so her whole behavior was dog like the second one was looked after by monkey and the third one if you see the way the hand is kept the he was living with uh, hens so he became hen like he was eating with lips as if it was a beak so the the one important thing is that children absorb observe absorb and imbibe they become that so that has to be very very clearly understood so the context is extremely important we become what we experience so this is a very interesting experiment that took place in 1930s they adopted a baby chump a chimp for for their child and but they had to remove the the chimp uh, soon because the child was behaving like the chimp so so how children learn how you know how do they develop their qualities and you know the processes so senses are the most important tool that we have it is through senses that we build our cognitive foundation senses give because initially it's only through senses that we, even if if the mother says whatever the child only hears the sound the child doesn't hear the meaning at all so it is through sensorial inputs that the initial foundation has been built is being built so observation of all senses now you can see that uh the child is constantly observing other very important thing that must be understood is what is called as comparison 
Uh, so please look at the, uh, uh, you know, what the child in the front is doing, how he is comparing the feet. This is an extremely important video because this is the crux of learning. Finding similarity, finding differences. This is the way children categorize each and every sensorial input. When the first mango is eaten, that is stored, second mango will tell them, ha, it is one type. So taking chance, this is another very, very important, uh, you know, uh, activity that children do. Guesswork, basically, well, that is what it means. Then, of course, repetition totally repeating, repeating. So I need to give you some redefinitions before we proceed because uh, we have appropriated each and every word to fit into our framework. Uh, learning in the natural context is, learning means to creating knowledge, not analyzing somebody's information and learning the real world, mind you. Learning also means shaping oneself. So learning is a two-way process. What you learn in turn shapes you. And creativity, because this has been completely hijacked by different kinds of professions called creative professions. Creativity is the root of learning because creativity is the response to the unknown. It's a response necessitated by the condition of unknown. So every living being in that sense has the potential for a creative activity. Curiosity is again life given. Everything in life is uh, curious. You can see the intent in which the, in that, uh, you know, I don't know what that is, is observing. Look, uh, so questioning, again, questioning is not a, see, the shift that we need to make is from our linguistic understanding of things into, under, you know, experiential understanding of things. So questioning for a small child has nothing to do with using language. It is actually, the question and answer is held within the realm of experience itself. And play, a totally mistaken idea because today now everyone is talking about playfulness without understanding anything about that. Uh, so look at this, the child was eating a coconut piece, took a bite and immediately remembered the Nandi bull. So he first comparison was with the horn and the second comparison, immediately he changed it to the, the half moon. So look at the way the child immediately remembered, recollected similar things, yet in a very, very different, uh, you know, uh, thing altogether. So this is the speciality of children to find certain similarities, even though they are uh, fundamentally very different things, you know. So, and this is precisely the principle by which children develop toys. So toys are the even more dangerous than school, schools and teaching. So play is actually the reenactment of experience. First of all, children experience the world playfully and then they reenact the experience. This is what we think is play. Of course, various names are given. Uh, toy is the object that is used as props in the reenactment of experience. So this child, this, this, uh, you know, that wooden thing is a, a, a child for some time. It became a bus. It became something else. It is used for sitting. So many different purposes, the same object. So this is the flexibility that the child minds have. Minds have. So ready-made toys are more dangerous. Toy is actually a process, an object in the process of, you know, experience. So body itself is used as a toy. I'm sure you must have observed how children use their palm as mobile phone. And in case anybody is able to uh, take a photograph of this, please send it to me. A child using the palm as mobile phone. Or the body is used in many, many different ways. I'm sure you must have all done body as a vehicle that you go around doing, going around, you know. So body itself become a toy. Nature as toy. Any object that nature gets. So it's actually exploring the world and understanding the world. It happens simultaneously. Any object as toy. Now this stick is a toy. This is his vehicle. A chappal. 
So children doesn't have any distinction between toy and non-toy. This has to be very clearly understood that because this is the first damage that you do to children, especially the rattle that you give, you know, people think that unless rattle is given, children's senses don't function. It's a tragedy of modern minds actually. Oh, imagination, another totally misunderstood idea. Because see, what we educated people have is what is called as imaginary imagination, because we read and make some guesses and create images. For a child, imagination comes from concrete experience. They imagine the stone to be their child. This is imagination. A simple two combs are put together and his aeroplane is ready. This is imagination. So there is a real image, real thing about which imagination is done, you know, in, in, in real concrete terms, this is imagination. We only know all these things that we talk about, whether it is reflection, imagination, abstraction, abstraction. I don't think even people know what that actually means. Anyway, other things are all in the realm of language. So look at this process orientation, creation of knowledge presence all the time and they are dealing with quality. Whereas us, we are, we are totally in the product orientation. Product orientation means we are dealing with knowledge as a product. We are never in the process of creating knowledge. So naturally, we are believers of knowledge, even though we, we may call ourselves scientists, you know, scientific and all that. Basically, what we are doing is believing in science. This is also known as scientism belief in science is called scientism and most educated are uh, basically a new religion called scientism and we are of course in absence and we are dealing with quantity all the time that's why we want to quantify everything all the time and natural pedagogy now this is very important for new parents to understand what is called natural pedagogy because everybody is interested in teaching a child teaching without teaching i call this teaching without teaching now look at this interesting video what is that that grandfather doing? He is doing things that he wants to do, not with an intention of teaching. Even the very intention of teaching is dangerous for a child. You lead your authentic lives. You do what you need to do. Children will pick up. Look at the child. The child is observing and learning. The, that old man is not once worried whether the child will learn or not. So this is basically the principle of learning. Child is a learner. In nature, there is only learning. Teaching happens very rarely, once in a while. If at all necessary, usually this doesn't happen. So what children learn? Now, this is another extremely important thing. First, as I told you, the real world is the content and the complex world is the content, but so they experience the objects, processes, process means, you know, household, I mean, what you do at home and process of life, social process, all this is the content of child's life. Of course, as they grow older and older. So this is the first lesson a child learns to be a mother, to take care. And this first lessons are what we are now taking away from children. Children actually should be grounded in autonomy in respecting life, in love, in care, not in the silly idea of knowledge. See, one thing you must understand is that learning is choiceless. Whatever the child learns is the knowledge for the child. And the first lesson is how to live, how to love, how to take care, how to respect. So, oh, sorry, this is a movie which... Uh, I need to show you. Oh, I have to read. Yeah. Student teacher. Yeah. Like. I mean, I thank you, teacher. Bola hai. Nahi na. Thank you, teacher. Like. Finger on your lips. Dekho na maine. Abhi abhi to na hai. Finger on your lips. Hello. 
so this is very interesting that once children get exposed to the idea of teaching they imbibe how to be a teacher and what is interesting is that uh, they come wherever possible they start reenacting and absorbing and imbibing and becoming a teacher so they, it doesn't matter whether they have uh, you know what kind of children they you know students they have so in this case she has put uh, two of her cats and we also had noticed once that this child was actually teaching the dots that are in front look at the arrangement a classroom like arrangement that she saw and immediately converted that into her classroom so this is so interesting that of course it's a it's a mind blowing idea that how children are able to immediately make use of a situation but also think that what has she learned from that now look at this look at the body language of that child no so this is actually what we learn so you must understand that our body our senses learn imbibe everything in experience so what classroom school does is to create a fragmented person in which the mind is involved in the language that the teacher is telling where the body is experiencing meaning emotion senses all that experiencing the teacher so what is she picked up she has picked up the behavioral uh, aspects of the teacher the authority the teaching mind so naturally what she learn learn is various attributes of phenomena which means the form function process material structure relationship context so what is what actually this means is that now let me just show you this mouse you know this as a form it looks like something you can of course it's like a rat a mouse it looks like something which means it is a form it is a function you do something with that it is it and it is there's a process by which it is made there are materials it has achieved a structural stability and it is in relationship with other things if you look at any activity the children are doing spontaneously you will find that this is what children are doing whether they are you know trying to understand material things social things or natural things everything you will you will be able to understand they are trying to understand what life is all about this is only thing that the child is wanting to understand so form mean you know size color other attributes how does it feel sensation texture temperature how does it behave what is the property softness and things like that so form cha now this uh, i'm sure most of you in your childhood must have kept the book like this kept it like this and either called it a tent or a you know or a house or something like that other thing you must have done is uh, you must have uh, you know placed a bed sheet over a table and called it a house now so so this children are near uh, flats so the complexity of their building has gone up now this is even more complex so this is a fantastic activity i had shot this is the uh, you know the bazaar the the uh, market vegetable market and you know and what is interesting was that most of the things they have used were looking very similar in shape of i you know in size in 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 form to the object but there was one object that i found very interesting it was the they used flower in which case they were actually comparing the color in that case you know uh, the bengan the the eggplant the what they did now this is so interesting that they got together hibiscus as the uh, chilies so wherever possible they find the accurate similarity otherwise they simply adjust so function is that, that this is what i was telling that we must have all done this put a bed sheet over a table and so in this case our preoccupation is with the contained space because that is the function of the house to offer a contained space so children recreate contained space and that becomes their uh, point of exploration and of course this is something that i'm sure all of you must have done process is process of making you know in in this case your uh, focus is how do you build something and of course structure is the final uh, and you must have seen that how many times uh, children create and recreate and recreate recreate finally it reaches a stable thing which means that they are concerned about structural stability and property means what is the material what material offers i'm sure you must have seen observe children sitting on a sofa and start bouncing 
Why is that every child doing this? So this is in the railway station. You have this uh, very smooth surface on which the child is constantly sliding. So, natural exploration of senses. And of course, you must understand that these are this is not done in a very linear and structured way. There is always a combination of things. So I found this very interesting, you know, this particular thing in which he has achieved all the four, you know, material is explored, contain, you know, the structure is explored, process is done, and of course, the function is explored, you know. So one important principle is that they experience the whole, explore the parts, and natural synthesis will happen. Now, this is an area that needs uh, far more work. I have, you know, only begun to look at that. Um, um, so in this, I, I feel that, so, so uh, take a look at this. See whether the child is creating knowledge. I'm sure she is not taught by her parents how to do this. And look at this as an integrated process in which child is learning to be careful, creating knowledge, being creative, being flexible, like a scientist trying out. Judgments are being done. Get on fast, I have to move. So there he is. So basically, uh, you know, we need to understand that why, what, how are the fundamental questions around which knowledge gets created? Where and when are the context? And uh, I also feel that there is something called inherent attentions within us. Because our first engagement is always in response to the question, what? What is happening? Because this question, what is happening, is what actually immediately triggers the sensors to you know, be alert. It begins to hear the sound, immediately the you know, observation happens. And the, the, the first, and if you pay more and more attention to what is happening, slowly the how gets opened up. Why is more hidden? Why requires far more involvement, and of course, in in every of our uh, of our uh, engagement, all the three are in, you know in, integrally present with uh, maybe a certain amount of uh, uh, what you call that uh, uh, priority to certain things, and and of course, this is the first level of knowledge. Now, the second level of knowledge is when you become more interested in staying with any of these questions. For example, let's take language, for example. I I'm sure most people, for most people, grammar must have been the most boring subject, at least in the initial stages. One subject that was terrible, probably even more than mathematics. So, how do, using this principle, what really happens actually? First thing, see, one thing that you must remember is that children in Bangalore slums learn four languages by the time they reach four years with nobody teaching at all. And, and different kinds of languages, Tamil, uh, Telugu, Kannada, Hindi, 
four languages they learn. So how does it happen? And suppose you want to understand grammar, which of these questions should come to come to act? It actually, it's the same principle that you saw that when the child was looking at two feet and making the comparisons, make, finding the similarity and finding the difference. Exactly this is the rule that is being used at every level of knowledge creation. Now, if you want to understand what is how grammar is, the only thing you need to do is to begin to pay attention to how language is being spoken. And of course, this is not something that everybody but should do it. It's only if you're interested. So biology of learning is experience is the cognitive source. Understanding takes place in experience. Senses are the input device. Senses awaken the inner world as it engages with the outer world. So there is naturally, as I told you, two-way process. We are nature and all the rules of nature are applicable to us. Understanding happens in self-organization where neither reasoning nor language has any role to play. This is a very crucial thing to understand because our understanding of knowledge and understanding happens in the realm of language using reasoning. So now let me just take language. See how children learn language. This is an extremely important thing to understand. First of all, children, uh, learn language at a much later date. First experience is purely sensorial. And within the sensorial experience, they begin to differentiate different, different things. Ha, this, is sweet, this is sweet, this is bitter, this is this, without the language at all. It's through comparison. When they eat mango, banana, uh, apple, and all the things, there is a similar taste that tells them that, ah, this belongs to one type of uh, category. And uh, as you saw earlier, metaphor, metaphor is the most important thing that is used, that, that comes to play at every, every uh, act of learning. So language is the name that we give to our experience. Experience is verb and language is now. So let me just show you some interesting thing. So, so this is really, I want to show you an example of metaphor. The same thing studying form. She had seen me working on laptop. There was a greeting card, immediately opened it and said, now she, you know, that she was, she started using this. This is even more interesting. This, uh, you know, these two plugs, she told this is father and mother. And next moment she did, lay down and said that they are uh, sleeping now. So, uh, so, so how actually children learn is adults provide the word. Children hear the sound. Meaning gets created in experience. Now, what is different between the educated people doing is that they don't allow the children to create meaning. Actually, they provide the meaning itself. That is the difference. Now, the moment you teach, you are engaged in giving meaning. If you normally speak to a child, not to a child, even in your own conversation with other people, if you are very normal, children will learn each and every word from the context and they are able to connect the word and the word together. So this is a you know interesting example of how, you know, how categories and you know this is get created. This child had was you know three year old, saw this peacock flying. Immediately she told this is a crow. Because her first category of all flying ones are crows. Because the first thing that the child saw was a crow. So everything that is flying began, you know, she began to call them kaka. And interestingly, the peacock, you know, got down and started walking. Immediately she called the same peacock dog. That's very interesting. Because for her, all the walking ones are kuta. So this is the so this is the way children keep on creating categories initially at a very very small scale and then slowly build on the category using all kinds of parameters you know uh, uh, phenomena uh, cat, you know attributes. So form is a very very important thing. So the child initially the child used to call cats Mimi and dogs Cuckoo, 
and on seeing a you know this thing uh, tiger she called them bada mimi and interesting was that the, the, the lion had two names because the face was like a cat and the body was like a dog so the the child would shift between these two and as you can see uh, how slowly the categories gets built up you know using sound form color texture various attributes and of course in terms of fruits and other food and all that it will be taste smell all those kind of things so categories are abstracted from experiences and and they are arising from the sensory response of the body and this process goes on before the child learns language and language is only a convenient tool for identification and communication you see that you can give mango any name you want you know aam amchi manga manga konga kanga you call anything the taste is going to be the same it's only the name that differs so creation of language is through integration of the word and the world this is a very crucial thing to understand that the word and the world the child integrates if you don't interfere so every activity a child does is cognitive activity so initial experiences are playful like when they eat food you know you can see any activity the child does is playful then that leads to recreating experiences in the real world which is called as play and toys and the third is actually recreating experience in two dimensional space drawing so now drawing is a very very important thing to understand because you see the two dimensional space that is being provided today is very new in our history of human kind it is only after the printing press came in that two dimensional space became more commonly available to all the people so drawing in none of the villages you will not find any non literate people engaged in drawing drawing is done only by communities who are involved in drawing for like chitrakars so chitrakar community or in the madhubani context the children would be drawing that is because the parents are drawing but in none of the other communities for example you take potters you will not find a potter child sitting and drawing anything so drawing itself as an act which is two dimensional in, in nature is something that is new and, and it's, it's it's it has to be understood how children adapt to this so drawing so what i would like to say is that we have done a fantastic study of children's drawing for from thousands of drawing we have studied what is the nature of drawing and we found that drawing is it actually resembles the developmental stages in every other uh, you know uh, things in what we do like talking walking or any kind of stability bodily stability so drawing is basically an adaptive activity that the child does to understand three dimensional world in terms of two dimensional space provided you don't interfere with any kind of things even the word drawing itself will cause problem so crawling stage of drawing scribbling that you do then closer observation leads to more and more complex i i will not go into the detail of this just uh, give you just a glimpse of these things you know so how the how the child reaches three dimension is interesting from one line drawing to slowly 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 you know as the child grows so this is what i'm telling the content is the same the child reduces it simplifies it and then of course it it has reached the three dimensional aspect and the same thing with uh, the uh, you know how how children start speaking one word one sound and then how that leads to the whole story building exactly like that you will find in the in the, in the drawing thing also complexity increases so this imagination is another thing the imagination here this so the person is pregnant and the child is inside the stomach of that you know so this is a, even a, another level of uh, imagination in which the child there are three generations together <laughs> exploration of form exploring process you see the same kind of processes that you see in uh, recreating play is being applied even in drawing it just that we have not paid attention to any of these things to understand why children do all kinds of activities so my definition is that drawing is a process invented by children adapted by children to make sense of the three dimensional world in terms of two dimensional space 
uh, it is not art so you see curiosity is life given it leads to observation leads to exploration leads to interest attention patience now this is a ongoing circle where experience is the basis recurring refining renewing so let me also quickly uh, talk to you about art urge for order is innate so art again is a modern construct completely misunderstood what is the role of beauty in life now please take a look at the child that is the girl that is sitting there see what she is doing you saw oh sorry 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 Mohan, this person, Janani, Janani, please close your uh, mic, please. Uh, the, the little disturbance in what I was talking about. Sorry for that. Yeah. So please look at this once again. The the girl. Uh, So where does this innate urge comes in? And you can also show that, uh, you know, that the other child also took part in it and she was not instructing. So there is an innate urge for order in a certain kind of easiness uh, in, in, in life. And uh, if you, so, so look at composition, for example, when you say something is composed, what does it actually mean? It actually means that it demands the least cognitive effort. That's what it means. That there is easiness in the eye because of something that is composed. So it's actually a very, very functional thing. So again, look at this, you know, achieving economy in action. This is what rhythm and body, it's not for doing dance at all. Primary thing is to retain the rhythm in the body. <laughs> You can see at every stage, this rhythm, this beauty is maintained. And automatically, there is no intention to create beauty at all. This is to be understood. There is no intention. This is how life is. So art practiced by modernity is a construct of the mind. The notion of self-expression is just 100 year old. So this self-expression is the latest nonsense that is going around everywhere. As if everybody is interested in knowing your self-expression. You see, if you look at any of the masters, they have always engaged in selfless expression. It was the universe that was, you know, through them, it was coming out. So, so please don't go around and promoting this nonsense. So this is something that you go into any rural travel area. This is something you see with no intention to create beauty. It's so natural for people to, you know, do things beautifully. That is an integral being. A fragmented being is... There is intention that is all separated. You want to do beauty. So first you do something unbeautiful and then you create beauty. So this you find in every activity, not only in cooking, whatever they do. So aesthetics is one of the most misunderstood aspect of modernity because it's understood from a very psychological concept. It's basically rooted in our biology. Beauty is one of the fundamental aspects of life, which ensures organic organization of life. It helps, helps in external organization, internal organization. And beauty is that which enables us to be in communion with nature. So, uh, making some conclusions that we have totally misunderstood. Uh, children play toy, knowledge creation as a process, content of knowledge, role of experience, and role of language. Basically, it is about from conditioning, we must go into awakening. So how do we create conditions, physical conditions? Because in modernity, there is no physical condition that, that enables awakening. It's only for conditioning. So no miniaturized and distorted versions, mobile phones, screens, all kinds of screens, including books are dangerous for children. 
they need to see the real world. See, the, the health, like if you don't eat good food, you don't have physical health. If you don't have good inputs, sensorial inputs, you don't have good psychological health. It's a very simple thing. So what should be the, the input of the child must see? Child must see life as it is happening around, the beautiful life that is happening around. This should be the input, not the miniaturized versions and you know, all the silly toys, plastic things that you, and the electronic thing that is happening all around us, even more dangerous actually. And, and everything should be accessible, make your kitchen on the ground, start using ground as the least furniture would be of great help and get into processes, stop using ready-made stuff, cooking, get everything there and start cooking now. Even make sambar puri, don't buy it. So kitchen going up is, is one of the major factors, you know, and allow children to engage in every activity. Don't interfere with them. So this is a very, very interesting video that Anjana had shared from one of the Marathi groups in which uh, by mistake, uh, uh, atta, the floor fell down from the mother's hand and then the child begin, began to start using it, right? they start cleaning it. But what is very interesting about this is that she had attended our sessions, so she allowed this to happen. So this is what the modern parents are having problem with. They are unnecessarily concerned about cleanliness, which they must not worry at all about, you know, arrangement of the house as if they are, you know, somebody is going to visit them and give them mark. So the mother became extremely, uh, you know, uh, allowing and understanding that the child needs that autonomy. There is no nonsense that the child does. Creating psychological conditions means stop saying no to the child. Don't. Then never talk about shyness, no comparisons. All this language use is detrimental to, because everything the child is absorbing. When you say don't, the child is immediately, when the child gets angry for don't, because see, curtailing of freedom is the most detrimental thing and the, and the thing that we don't like at all. This is to be clearly understood. And of course, you know, this is what it is, actually. There is an inherent thing that within the tiny bunion seed is its potential to bloom to its immensity. There is no input that it requires to bloom to its full potential. Only existential conditions, conditions of freedom, trust and unconditional love. This is the only thing that you, you need to give children because nothing else actually you can give. This is a pretense. You can only damage what is given by life. This is on, That's only what you can do actually. And we are complete at every stage. This is to be again understood. I'm bringing it back again. So from teaching environment, we need to move into learning environment. And one of the things that we must understand is that unless we become inquirers, learners, our child will never be a learner because they will imbibe our, you know, our inability to learn from us. So the whole purpose of our, uh, you know, foundation, which is existential knowledge foundation has been to collaborate, come together and reinitiate inquiry in, 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 in society so that children have a different space altogether. And, and of course, now please don't get angry with me. I have to tell you one very, very difficult thing. Screens, especially books, because these people don't understand at all. Toys, play date. You see, one very important thing is that if you can keep away from the Western knowledge system, that will be really helpful. Because if you look at all these terminologies, all this is coming from English educated westernized Indians. Play date. It's a new thing. Please stop all this nonsense. Children don't need all that kind of stuff. Art, of course, it's again coming from their reading of too many books. Stories, another tragedy. Montessori method, that's a new latest thing that is happening. No, all methods are dangerous for children because children are themselves a natural method. If you interfere with that, it will create damage to the system. And of course, don't get angry for this. Don't get angry. Educated adults and teachers, keep children away from them. Okay, now I come to my final thing. So we are deeply trying to understand all these things based on why children play, what is drawing, what is language, what is art. And we're trying to create small modules for us to learn together. So please join in 
please support us in in what we are doing you must understand that there is hardly anybody that is trying to understand how children learn for the purpose of recreating environment for children a better life for children so please join in in our effort join us in in you know in taking this forward in in every way of course we also need financial support for taking this forward because we need we also are planning to put up an interesting website where people can come together and have a collation of our experiences so this is our uh foundation's name it, you can uh, you know check out more about what we do there our courses and everything else so thank you very much so we can spend some time if you have any but some silence is also good two minute silence would be good and then slowly you can